Hello, everyone. Welcome to Calvary International Baptist Church's、um, Wednesday night, verse by verse and chapter by chapter Bible study. Let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for tonight that we can come to you, can go to your Word, and study your Word. Lord, may you just watch over each one of us, help us to calm our hearts, calm our minds. And to just rest in you. It's been busy week for most of us, but Lord, it's always good to study your word. May your Holy Spirit guide us, Lord, in Jesus' name, Amen. All right, we're in Psalm 58、uh, tonight, and we're gonna, Lord willing, we'll go to Psalm 61, and. King David was、um, in Psalm 58. He was distressed about the inequality of the judgments in the court system, in the justice system. You know, when a nation starts to go downhill, it starts with the justice system. When the justice system is not correct, or when the judges are giving out、um, sentences. That are not according to truth, then we have an issue, and that's always the start of a fall of a nation, when the justice system is just not doing what God's word says. They they would say, truth is false, false is truth, and that's not right. And、um, we're gonna、uh, see that happening here.、Um, You know, well, let's just get going.、Uh, Psalm fifty-eight, verse one: Do you indeed speak righteousness, you silent ones? Do you judge uprightly, you sons of men? No, in heart you work wickedness. You weigh out the violence on your hands in the earth. You know what David was saying here is that. You know, in the heart of the people who judge, there's you work wickedness, and it happens in real life.、Um, my pastor used to say, tell us this story about this、um, judge、uh, in Orange County in in、um, in California, and he would always give very light sentences or no sentences for people who drove. Drunk or did anything that has to do with alcohol, he would just say, "Oh, you know, we understand. Just, just don't do it anymore, and 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 just be careful." And people were wondering why that is, and then it, he, it was found out that this guy was an alcoholic, the judge, and he understood what alcohol would do to one's mind, one's body, one's action. And he would just give really light or again no sentences、uh, to people who were、uh, who were drunk, and and what happened was all the lawyers, all the defense lawyers, found this out. So they would tell their people, the people they're defending, they would say, "Hey, just tell the judge you're drinking, and he's not going to give you anything." And that's what that was what's happening, and and it, it happened, and it's just.、Um, It just tells you when the when we started to do sin ourselves, and then we try to judge others or help others. Be careful, be careful. We're going to be leading people down the wrong, wrong path. And these judges,、um, and there's a lot, lot of other. So this is what David was talking about. No, in heart you work wickedness. You weigh out the violence of your hands in the earth, and then verse three: the wicked are estranged from the womb; they go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. We're born with a sinful nature. I'm a sinner. You are a sinner.、Um, based on what Adam did, we're just born with that sinful nature. And there, are some people that has a bent towards rebellion, and. He's saying that you know we. So David was distressed that these people were giving out bad judgment. You know the truth is, God sees everything, and one day 
even the people who are leading others astray or doing all these bad judgments, they will be found out. Um, okay, let's go. Verse 4. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf cobra that stops its ear, which will not heed the voice of charmers, charming ever so skillfully. Break their teeth in their mouth, O God. Break out the fangs of the young lions, O Lord. You know, David is one of those, you know, fighting men. Break the teeth of these guys, O Lord. And it's, um, it's, 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 uh, He's just like one of us, you know. We want to break the teeth of our enemies, but we are, we're always asking for mercy for ourselves. Um, verse 7, let them flow away as water which run continually. You know, in that area, it was desert area, right? The Middle East end. When you pour out water, it's just going to dry up really, really quick. Let them, flow, um, let them flow away as water which runs continually. When he bends his bow, let his arrow be as if it if cut in pieces, let them be like a snail which melts away as it goes, like a stillborn child of a woman, that they may not see the sun. We can tell that David does not like these judges, these people who are giving, um, giving you know, wrong sentences or not truthful sentences or not just sentences because they themselves, the judges themselves, are sinning. And it's, it's a downfall of a, of a nation. Verse 9, Before your, your pots can feel the burning thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, as is his living and burning wrath. They, back then they would use thorns for fuel to fire up uh, the pot. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. Um, the righteous will rejoice when they see God judges the final judgment, when God judges. And the truth is, God will judge one day. Every single person, we think we can get away with stuff, uh, we're fooling ourselves. I'm, gonna, I'm fooling myself I can, if I think I can get away with stuff. God sees the beginning and the end, and He will judge. He will judge the motive of the heart. He will judge what's on the inside, not what we say, what we do. He will judge. And then the righteous will rejoice. We will rejoice. I'm happy when the judge does, you know, judge righteously. If I sin, if I did something wrong, I deserve to face the consequences. But if someone... Um, there was a case in um, in in the U.S. where uh, a person was killed by two people, but only those two persons saw the killing and they admitted that that the killing was done by one of them, but they both pointed to the other ones and the other one, and so the defense and the prosecutor said there's no other there's no other people. They admitted it. But they said, you did it, and he said, you did it. They threw the case away because there's no other witnesses and nobody, and they can't be sure who did it, even though they killed a person. I mean, it's these type of judgments that, that, that's, that drives David and, and, and drives, you know, regular people nuts because what? I mean, the evidences are there. But the justice system is just so wrong that, you know, it, it, it favors so much tilts on the side of injustice. And, um, but one day, one day the Lord will reveal everything. And no one's going to get away with anything. And then we will rejoice. Um, the second half of verse 10, He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So the men will say, Surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely he is a God who judges the earth. The day will come when God will judge righteously. And people will realize that it is, it is good to do, to live righteously, to do what God says. And there, there are consequences to doing 
what's wrong. Innately, you and I know that. Even non-Christians know that. There's something inside of a man that knows what's right and what's wrong in God's eyes. But sometimes, there are many, many times that we just choose to ignore the Lord. We would just try to do things our own way, and that's always the hard road. Um, the Psalm 59 is a psalm that uh, was, was about David when he was pretty young. Um, you remember when, um, when uh, Saul, King Saul, said, whoever de defeats Goliath, he's going to give his daughter to, to the man who defeats Goliath. And, 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 and David, you know, we know the story, he defeated Goliath, and in the end, he married uh, Michael or Michelle. Uh, it's spelled like Michael. So sometimes I say Michael, but um, David, uh, Saul's daughter, and in the beginning they were um, they were very compatible. They, uh, you know, they they got along, but in the end, uh, incompatible. But this was early on. But Saul wanted, I mean, Saul had this spirit in him that just was very jealous of David, and he wanted David dead, and so he sent these vile men. To, to watch the house where uh, Michael or Michelle and David lived. And he had these vile, very cruel men. He want them to get, go get David and take him to Saul, and they're going to kill him right there. And so this was written, a Psalm of David was written that night uh, that these guys were watching, and David was afraid. And he was crying out to the Lord. So, deliver me from my enemies, O my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. And save me from bloodthirsty men. David was crying out for deliverance. And, you know, it's important to talk to the Lord, to cry out to the Lord. And he, he actually, oh, he knew the plot, and he's trying to figure out what to do. So what happened was David um, and Michelle, they, they knew this, so Michelle had David go through a window, go outside and, at night, and David escaped at that time. Um, and then Michelle put a, um, uh, like a dummy, you know, uh, on the bed and covered, uh, covered it up, uh, pretending that David was sleeping there. So when the men, when the men, these cruel men came and um, came and Michelle said, hey, David's sick, he's sleeping. So these guys went back to King Saul and Saul said, I don't care if he's sick, you drag him here. If you have to move the bed, move him over here. He's going to die tonight. And when they went back, they found out that it was a fake. They told King Saul. King Saul went to his daughter and said, are, are you trying to, to defend that guy? I, I, you know, he's an enemy. And Michelle just said that, well, what am I supposed to do? He said, because David said, why should you lose your life? And meaning that, you know, David threatened her. So that's the whole scene. And David wrote this, deliver me from my enemy, defend me, deliver, deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from these bloodthirsty men. For look, they lie in wait for my life. Verse 3, the mighty gather against me, not for my transgression nor for my sin, O Lord. Hey, I, I didn't do anything to Saul. I, I'm innocent. I didn't do anything to, in fact, I'm one of his most loyal guys, and, and he's trying to get rid of me. Not for my transgressions, nor for my sin, O Lord. Verse 4, they run and prepare themselves though through no fault of mine. David, you know, he was innocent. He was just doing his work. And these guys, Saul was jealous and just wanted to kill him. And these bloodthirsty men were trying to, you know, trying to get him. And, and now he, um, 
David is afraid. He's, he's one guy, and the whole nation is after him. Awake to help me, and behold, you therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the Lord of Israel, awake to punish all the nations. Do not be merciful to the, any wicked transgressors. He's asking God to help, help, defend me, deliver me. Awake, O Lord. And then don't be merciful to those wicked guys. It's amazing. Again, David's just like one of us, you know. Hey, don't be merciful to, to my enemies, but be merciful to me. And, but, you know, we're, we're pretty much alike. Verse 6, at, the, at evening they return, they growl like dog, and they go around the city. So apparently they're watching the house in the morning. They left probably for dinner. At evening they came back, and they're like barking dogs. You know, they're, they're just growling, and they're, they're trying to uh, bring turmoil uh, to the, all around the city. Indeed, they belch with their mouth. Swords are in their lips, for they say, who hears? These guys are cruel people. And then they, they're issuing, shouting, barking threats. And, and they have a dis, total disregard for God. They just said, hey, you know, the king's going to pay. We're going to go do it. Then verse 8, but you, O Lord, shall laugh at them. You shall have all the nations in derision. God sees everything. God knows. God allowed it. And he's just up there. He's watching. He's sovereign. The Lord's going to laugh at them, and he's going to cause confusion to all these people. I will wait for you. O oh, you, his strength, for God is my defense. You know, David sought God's help. David sought God's help in times of trouble. And, you know, it's one of those things that it's always good, it's wise to search for the Lord's help at all times. You know, you and I, sometimes we feel like we need to defend ourselves. But, and God some, will allow you if you want to, but we do a lousy job of defending ourselves. We say, oh, I did this, I have this degree, I, you, know, I, 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 you know, I did this for church, and it's a lousy job. God can do it best. We search, we seek after God and ask for His help, and that's what He did. I will wait for you, O you, His strength, for God is my defense. For my God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire on my enemies. When we go to the Lord, it's so, so important to realize He's Almighty God and that He knows when, he knows how, he knows why, he knows just the right speed of doing things. He just knows what to do. But if we don't go to the Lord, we try to do things quickly, we go the wrong way, we make mistakes. We don't want to do that. We go to the Lord. We don't want to keep banging our heads on the wall and make mistake after mistake after mistake. And sometimes, sometimes the Lord will say, hey, you know, it's time to stop doing that. Come to me. And sometimes you'll say, hey, repent. He tells me, hey, repent. And I need to repent. Maybe he's telling you also, repent. Don't fight anymore. Maybe he's saying that to you, to me. And we I need to listen. We all need to listen. Okay. My God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire on my enemies. Do not slay them, lest my people forget. Scatter me from your power but bring, and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. David was saying, hey, don't kill them. 
but scatter them. Because if you kill them, people are going to forget what they've done. But scatter them, confuse them by your power. Bring them down, O Lord, our shield. You know, I don't want to be an enemy of God. I, that's my nightmare. If I become an enemy of God, I don't want to fight against God. I want to be on God's side. I want to do what His Word says. I want to follow Him. And if He tells me, hey, John, it's time to do something else. I need you to go to, you know, Tainan. I need you to go to U.S. I need you to go to Philippines. I need you to go to Indonesia. You know, as soon as the Lord tells me, boom, I'm out of here. But sometimes the Lord said, I need you to stay. It's tough. It's hard. It's difficult. There's fiery trials. But I need you to face it. Lord, I don't want to. I want to go somewhere else. I need you to stay. What do you do? We obey. We're obedient to the Lord. And we keep praying and ask the Lord to lead. But if you become an enemy of God, you know, scatter them by your power. Bring them down, O oh Lord, our shield. We never want to fight against God. Not a good proposition, never a good ending. Verse 12, for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them ever be taken in their pride. For, and for the cursing and lying which they speak. We don't want to curse and lie against God, against God's people, against His church. Consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be. And let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. And at evening they return, they growl like a dog. And they go around the city. They wander up and down for food and howl if they are not satisfied. But I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. For you have been my defense and refuge in my day of trouble. You know, David, he always starts his prayer when he was in trouble. I mean, it seems like in this psalm, he was in trouble. He cried out to the, God, to, the, to the Lord for help. And he sees all these trouble. He was burdened. But as he prayed, as David prayed, the focus began to change from all that problems. The focus changed from all that focus. When we pray, the focus should be God. Yes, we bring our problems to the Lord, but then we looked at Almighty God. We see Him. He is our strength. He is our deliverer. He is the mighty God. He is our refuge. He is the one who can help. He is the one who created the heavens and the earth. He created us for our purpose. When the focus becomes God, and when we see God for who He is, our thinking, our perspective, our heart, our emotions, everything changes. You notice here, he was all, you know, in trouble and looking, you know, kind of down. But then, now he says, I will sing of your power. I will sing of your mercy in the morning. I believe you're going to take care of all this. I'm going to be singing victoriously for you have been my defense. You're the refuge in the day of my trouble. You know, David is not looking anymore at these people lying in wait, at the king, the powerful king, all these rich people, all these, um, you know, people with all the connections. King Saul had all the connections. He had all the money. He had the army with him. He had bl vile men, bloodthirsty men trying to kill me, and David was not looking at that anymore. He's looking at God. He's saying, God, you're my defense. They're not fighting against me now. They're fighting against you. You're my defense. You're my refuge. Totally different perspective. We need to have that perspective. 
we need to go to the Lord. And once we go to the Lord, He'll change our focus. And it doesn't matter what you're facing right now. You can ha have all the world against you. In fact, uh, the quote is always, what will, what, will gain a man, um, what will gain man if he has the whole world but loses his own soul? That whole world can be against you. But just you and God. And the key is God with you. He's your defense. He's your deliverer. And he'll change. He'll, he'll allow you to be, he'll allow you to sing. He'll allow you to have that peace when everything else is going crazy. He is our peace. So David ends up here with um, verse 17. To you, O my strength, I will sing praises, for God is my defense, my God of mercy. Wow. Amazing. David starts off with bleakness, with problems, with being, oh, you know, just just seeing all everything. But now he sees from God's perspective. Then Psalm 60 is when um, David and his army were defeated by the Enemites. And, they, and David, you know, back then, they don't even, um, they, it's, it's by practice, they don't write about defeats. So we don't really have this, um, you know, the record of the defeat. We have the record of what happened afterwards because they were defeated, and then later on, David had Joab went into went over there and def and killed over twelve thousand Edomites, and um, but this was when they were um, they were trying to um, figure out, and David was trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> Um, they, they were confused that these mighty men of David were never defeated. I mean, they'd rarely taste any defeat before. And they're trying to figure life out. And um, so that's what um, David was uh, writing about. Um, verse 1, O oh God, you have cast us off. You have broken us down. You have been displeased. O oh, restore us again. Oh, Lord, we're not used to this. Something happened. Um, we got defeated. Restore us. Bring us back in alignment with you. You know, whenever you and I are um, doing something that's not of God, God wants us to go this way, and we're going this way, we're going that way. We need to come back to the Lord. We need to be restored back and ask the Lord to bring us back. Because if we keep going that way, it's the hard road, and there are consequences to that road. But when we come back, the Lord will receive us. And God wants us to do that, and He's praying, Oh, restore us again. You have been displeased. We don't want the Lord to be displeased with us. Verse 2, you have made the earth tremble. You have broken it. Heal its breaches, for it is shaking. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us drink the wine of confusion. You know, when we're not doing what God wants us to do, we will have confusion. We will have frustration. We will be facing hard things. Verse 4, you have given a banner to those who fear you that it may be displayed because of truth. You know, David wanted that banner back so they can have a banner of victory. And he's asking for that. That your, that your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and hear me. You know, we really need, and this these next few verses shows us that, we need to know God's Word. We need to know God's promises. And we need to really meditate on His Word because David, facing defeat, 
just being defeated by the Edomites, I mean, later on, they're going to go back and, and go get those guys. But David now, he would use God's promises, and he would quote back God's promises back to the Lord. He said, Lord, you promised this. We believe in you. We want to trust you. You never break your word. And David had a um, thorough knowledge of what was God's word written up to then, and mainly the Pentateuch, um, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. And if you remember, even in Psalm 1, um, let me turn over there. Even in Psalm 1, David uh, wrote this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the, of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the counsel of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And then he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth its fruit in the season, whose leaf also shall not wither, but whatever he does, he prospers. And meditate, blessed is he who meditates on the law, on God's word, day and night. And David shown here that he did. He studied God's word. He meditated on his word day and night. Do you think about God's word throughout the day? Do you have a daily time of spending time in his word and let his word wash us, cleanse us, and we meditate on it and we dwell in it? We eat it, as Jeremiah said. Um, David did that, so this is what he did. Verse 6, God has spoken. God has spoken. This is God's word. In his holiness, I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and measure out the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is also, also is the helmet of my, for my head. Judah is my law given. Moab is my wash pot. And then he said, over Edom, I will cast my shoe. Of Felicia, shout in triumph because of me. You know, he's using God's word and he's saying, Lord, you promised this. And they were just defeated by Edom. And now he says, over Edom, I will cast my shoe. Lord, you said we're going to defeat the Edomites. And they did. They did. Joab went over there and, and destroyed 12,000 of them, got rid of them. David went back to the Lord, and he prayed, and he remembered what God's word said. Who will bring, verse 9, bring me to the strong city? Who will lead me to Edom? The strong city is a Petra. Petra is that strong city, that rock city, that fortified city, that impenetrable city of the Edomites. Who's going to lead me? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O God, who cast us off? And you, O God, who did not go out with our armies? It's going to be the Lord. Give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. Lord, and he's saying, Lord, I need your help. I need your help. No one else can help. Only you. Help of man is useless. I want to be on your side. I want you to be right beside me. I want you to lead. It is not you, O Lord, who will cast us off, and you, O God, who did not go out with our armies. Give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. Verse 12. Through God we will do valiantly, for it is He who shall tread down our enemies. You know, when we go back to the Lord, when we pray and realize what God's perspectives are, that He is sovereign, that He keeps His promises. And for me, you know, I go back to this, and I, I, I look at, I, I, I know God's promises, and the Lord sometimes would remind me to go to um, 
back to His Word. And for if you're facing difficulties today, if you're facing people, uh, you know, just a lot of issues of life, remember this, go back to God's Word. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, Isaiah 54, 17. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. No weapon formed is no human weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you, God, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Are you serving the Lord? Am I serving the Lord? And the righteousness is from me, from God. And for us, it's from the Lord Jesus Christ, says the Lord. We need to know the Lord's Word, the full counsel of God. And when we go to His Word, God's going to give us hope. He'll show us that He is our deliverer. He is our strength. And He will protect His people. And then, Psalm 61. And Psalm 61 is, um, it is a Psalm of David. Um, it's when Absalom was David's son, drove King David out. And David was old at that time. So David has to leave Jerusalem, leave the temple, and, and, and just run for his life, actually. And, and he's on the east side of the Jordan. Um, and he, he was crying out to God. He didn't know what to do. And, and it seems like all is lost. And he was really overwhelmed. But when we are overwhelmed, um, what David did was he went to the Lord, which is always the right thing to do. Let's see what he did. Verse 1, Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayers. From the ends of the earth I will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed. And I'm going to stop there for now. You know, he, you know, Absalom, the son who, he, who David loved, was so rebellious that he is going, he wants his dad to die. He wanted to take over because he wanted to be king. And he, what he did was so wrong. He wanted to take over, take over the kingdom. But it wasn't his to take over. This is, David was God's chosen one, right? And out of seed of David, Messiah's going to come. And, but he wanted his way. And, and Absalom actually did even more wicked thing. He, when he went, got to Jerusalem, he set up a tent at the top and he took his father's concubines and in front of everybody. And he did, what he did was despicable. Um, you know, awful. And David, you know, he's crying out to God from the other side. And he said, from, you know, that verse 2, from the end of the earth, I will cry to you. From the end of the earth, he was just saying that I'm so far, but David wasn't that far. He was on the other side of the Jordan. But when you have all these problems, when your heart is overwhelmed and you can feel so far away from God, you can feel like, wow, everything is all these problems, my son is against me. He's trying to kill me. He has the whole, the people are with him. The tide changed from me to him, and I have to be on the run, and he's young, I'm old. Um, all these things. And we can feel so, so far, so lonely, so overwhelmed. But then he did the right thing. He went to the Lord. He went to the Lord. He says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock. God is, in the Bible, He's described as the rock, that huge, strong, stable rock, immovable, immovable rock. 
lead me to the rock that's higher than I. And if we just look forward to Psalm 62 for a second, next week we're going to go through this. But just the first verse, first few verses. Truly my soul silently waits for God. For Him comes my salvation. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. What David was saying was, Lord, I'm overwhelmed. These are problems that I don't know what to do with. I have no idea how to get out of this mess. I don't know. I never faced this before. And he cried out to the Lord. He says, lead me to the rock. He's asking, actually asking God to, to bring him to himself. Bring him to God. Bring him to, I, I want to come to you. You lead me to you. The rock that's higher than I. Because I don't know what to do, Lord. But you are the rock. You are the strength. You are the deliverer. You know what to do. I want to be on the rock higher than I. Do you have problems today? Are you going to the rock that's higher than you? Sometimes problems are too great too big, too strong. But the rock that's higher than me and you, those problems are nothing to him. He knows what to do. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from my enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. He's away from the temple. He's away from the tabernacle. He's away, and he feels but as he prays, he realizes that God is his deliverer, and he believes that he will be back in that tabernacle forever. He'll be there. And that takes a lot of faith when you're overwhelmed. And that's what happens when we pray, when we take the focus off our problems, focus on the, on the Lord. And the good news is that you don't have to be at a specific place to pray. You can pray anytime. You can spend time with the Lord anywhere, anytime. Are you doing that? Or are you just dwelling in all your problems? Oh, I'm, you know, poor me and uh, all these problems and that they're, they're picking on me. You know, go to the Lord. Go to the Lord and allow the Lord to change, to calm our hearts, to change our heart. Verse 5, For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life his years as many generations. Lord, you're going to be sustaining me. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So I will sing to your name forever that I may daily perform my vows. In the end, I'm going to be singing victoriously because, Lord, you're going to deliver me. And the truth is, you and, you and me, we're going to heaven. This is, place is temporarily. Te uh, it's a temporary place only. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years. Maybe 100 years for you. I hope you're healthy. But this is temporary. So why do things that's against the Lord, against His people? Why be an Absalom? You know, we don't want to do that. We want to be like a a, a David who repented from his sins, who turned back to the Lord, and he cries out to the Lord. He starts off his prayers, you notice, really gloom, but then he ends up singing. He ends up knowing who his deliverer is, where his strength is coming from. He has God's perspective now. Do you have God's perspective? I pray you do.
go to the Lord. Listen to Him. Spend time with Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You, Lord, for Your Word. Thank You that You are the Deliverer. You are our strength. You are our refuge. Even though sometimes life can be overwhelming. But Lord, when we go to You, lead us to the rock. Lead us to You that is higher than I, than me, than all of us. Thank You, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and hope to see you here next Wednesday. Take care.